Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to The Movie House and today I want to talk about Avengers Infinity War. As usual for my new movie reviews, I promise no spoilers. Good God, has it really been 10 years since the Marvel Cinematic Universe began its total global domination? 10 years since we first saw that Iron Man trailer and thought, wow, that's perfect casting. And it's worked out pretty well so far. To peace. 10 years since we first heard the words Avengers Initiative. And I couldn't have fathomed, even in my wildest dreams, that we would get to where we are now. With a unprecedented assemblage of superheroes in the fun but overpacked Avengers Infinity War. Infinity War is the culmination of the past 10 years and 19 films worth of continuity into a part one of a massive two-part crossover where Thanos, the big bad purple people beater, finally steps out of the shadows to make his move, seeking possession of the six powerful Infinity Stones. If he acquires them all, he can enact his plan to kill off half the population on every planet across the universe with simply a snap of his fingers. So now the Avengers, alongside the likes of Black Panther, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and the Guardians of the Galaxy, must set aside their petty squabbles if there is any hope of victory. One of my big worries walking into Infinity War was with Thanos himself. As I've said in the past, Marvel doesn't have the best track record when it comes to creating good villains. But I'll give them credit, it seems like they've been trying to rectify that cliche with its most recent batch of baddies. First there was the Vulture, then there was the amazing Killmonger, and my god, God, Thanos continues that streak. He is an amazingly realized antagonist. Sure, they've completely changed his origin story, but the new one they've come up with is compelling. It's been said that the best villains are the ones that feel like they are the heroes of their own stories. Well, Thanos is the very definition of that. The Mad Titan has an undeniably cold logic to his plan, but the movie lets us follow him and understand said madness. Thanos could almost be considered the main character of Infinity War. Our heroes are in a reactive mode to every advance he makes towards his goal. This is helped by some fantastic mocap acting by the very underappreciated Josh Brolin. Which, fun fact for those who don't know, he's also playing Cable next month in Deadpool 2. And also, apparently because Peter Parker would say this is a really old movie, he's also Mikey's older brother in The Goonies. But no! One older brother had to go and screw it up! But I digress. His calm, understated performance adds so much to a character that I was fearing would just end up being like a purple Debo. That's not my punk! <laughs> and I've heard people say that this is like the Empire Strikes Back of the MCU. I can see that, but I'd raise you one better. For those who get this reference, this is the Final Fantasy VI of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While it still has Marvel's signature humor, this is a film about loss and failure. Our heroes throughout the entire runtime just keep getting the shit kicked out of them. But thankfully, the director's brothers, Joe and Anthony Russo, have continued their proven command of this material after directing the second and third Captain America movies, otherwise known as the best films, probably, in the entire MCU. Infinity War, despite its inherent darkness, avoids the pitfalls that beset other <coughs> lesser superhero movies that have attempted to be serious. With fan service galore throughout the runtime, rewarding filmgoers that have stuck with this franchise from the very get-go, including a couple cameos that even I didn't see coming. The set pieces, especially at the end, are just about everything I could want out of these cape shit movies. And it does a commendable job with the unenviable task of trying to juggle all these disparate story threads. But that's not to say it's all smooth sailing. The film comes up with some pretty hackneyed excuses why certain characters are not as effective as they normally should be, or why they're simply not even there. And there's a particular story beat that's like repeated verbatim like three times in a row with the exact same setup and payoff, and each subsequent one just makes the emotional impact of it lesser. And those emotional beats still hit, and a lot of them hit hard, but there's one moment in particular where I was just pulled out of the movie because the character in question acts so obliviously to what's about to happen that they come off as a complete idiot. Yes, these elements definitely detract, but what Infinity War gets right, it absolutely gets right. And that makes for one hell of a good time, and that ending is a fucking doozy. The kind of climax that probably would have never even been attempted if it wasn't for the fact that we as an audience know already that there's going to be a part two resolution to that gut punch of a cliffhanger. Which ultimately, that's a blessing and a curse. Nevertheless, this is a pretty damn good movie. Not the best Marvel movie, hell, not even the best Avengers movie. But it is still amazing to see all these characters and 10 years of storytelling coalesce. It's just not put together in the most smooth or natural way. So in the end, Avengers Infinity War is some solid celluloid.
Thanks again, guys, for watching. As always, I appreciate the support. What did you guys think of Avengers Infinity War? I'd really like to hear from you. And as always, if you like what I have to say and you want to see more, click down here to subscribe, like, comment, share to your friends. Please do. And until next time.